tired and actually I don't plan on being super long tonight. But there's a few things that I want to look at. So what of what I want to speak tonight has to do with as we go to enter into black light and serving God and the opportunity that we have to present black light. I'm really glad for that. I'm really glad for that. That we can come together. And I love black light. I love I just love the unity we feel. I love the collaboration that we have. And I just really, really like it. It doesn't, it doesn't stress me. I don't feel stressed at all. In fact I feel encouraged. I feel like we work together so great. And so I always want to look, look at this thought. Serving the Lord. As we serve the Lord, whether it's in black light or whether it's in things of our life. You're probably not going to see anything else about black light now. I'm going to make it more about us and our individual lives because even if we're not in black light, we have the opportunity to serve God. And so in Luke chapter number four, I just want to look, we really just look at verse number 39, but I feel it's best to jump back to verse number 38 to get all the context. Remember, Jesus is doing. Prior to this, there's healing, there's deliverance that's going on. And so the Bible says, And he arose, speaking of Jesus, out of the synagogue, and he entered into Simon's house. Right now, this is really the headquarters that he has for his three and a half years of ministry, public ministry, that is. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and it left. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. There's some things that have to happen as we minister. All of our lives should be delegated uh, to uh, the ideology that we want to be a minister. We want to minister. Every one of us, that should be our heart's desire that we want to minister in whatever way. And I think that sometimes we have to found, find boundaries of what we do minister. Uh, there, are, there are boundaries that are given. But however, sometimes we put boundaries that extinguish the fires of being able to minister. And so one thing that is certain, each of us is called to minister. Let me just put this little side note in. I know the Catholic Church would say that Peter was the first pope. Well, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with that because if he was a pope, he was the first pope that I know that was married. Because the Bible is pretty specific that it was his mother-in-law who was sick. In fact, the Bible says that Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. It wasn't just a fever, you know, we will get fevers. Uh, we, we may feel like we've been hit by a back truck. It may increase our heart rate as our body fights off infection. Uh, but, but more than likely, when we get a fever, it's not one that is life-threatening. But in this instance, this is a life-threatening uh, fever that has come to the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. And, and uh, we find that, that uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, Jesus is sought out and he's brought to her, amen, and asked if he would heal her, amen. Aren't you glad that we can seek out Jesus when we need something, amen? God, this is what we have need of, amen. There's no better person to go to, amen, than Jesus, amen. You may, you may say, well, Brother Seville, I do go to the doctor, and I'm not going to lose out with you if you do or you don't. You just need to find out what's best for you. Amen. And so, but one thing for sure, you know, I, I, I know that I, I was having some problems and I wound up in the hospital. And I thank God for people who uh, have knowledge, but I have some great friends that are doctors and I realize that they're just people like you and I. They just spend a whole lot of time studying the best uh, modern medicine they know how. And so they, they have the ability to be able to treat with what man's knowledge there is. And so taking that man knowledge, but it was Jesus who I was looking for to heal me. If Jesus didn't come by, the medicine would be of not. Amen. If Jesus didn't come by, amen, uh, everything that we do would be of not. Amen. Uh, even if it's eating your, uh, uh, your, your bone broth soup, amen, it ain't going to heal you if Jesus don't come by. Amen. You can suck up as much vitamin C as you want and drink Gatorade until it runs out your ears, but unless Jesus passes by, you're not going to be healed. 
So they were looking for Jesus to come by. I'm sure that they were doing what they knew to do. She was in bed. She was resting. So here he comes. In. But, but there was something that I noticed. Amen. To the two extremities. She's sick. But the farther extremity that I see in the next verse is. Now she is up and she is ministering. Amen. So my question to us tonight is. What is it that we need God to do. That puts us in the place that we can immediately minister to people. Now you may say, Brother Seville, what was her ministry? She wasn't standing behind a pulpit. She probably wasn't passing out tracts. She was making a meal. She was ministering. That was the gifts and talents that she had and she took those gifts and talents and she ministered. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Why do we think that every ministry is something that's big and flamboyant? And it's only getting worse because we are pressured more than ever before, amen, to perform. It's nothing new. Jesus' brothers wanted him to perform as well, amen, but he said it wasn't time. And so there is that pressure to perform, amen. Do you know why everyone feels pressure to perform? Because you want to put your prettiest picture on Facebook or you want to put it on Instagram. You want everyone to like you. There's pressure to perform. Look at this beautiful cake. Look at this beautiful such and such. Look at me. You can say, yes, Brother Seville, or you can say, no, Brother Seville, but I know I'm right. And you ain't going to tell me no difference. <laughs> There's pressure to perform. But her performance wasn't because she felt pressure. It's because she wanted to. She wanted to get up and do something for her. <clears throat> and so, the very first thing that I see in verse number 39 is that Christ stood over her. If we are ever going to do anything for the kingdom of God, amen, we have got to have Christ over us. Amen. And I'm going to be real frank with you. It wasn't that Jesus was over top of her. It was probably that Jesus was standing by her bedside. But the Word of God says, but Jesus was over her. Amen. There's one thing is he might have been by her bedside, but he was still over her. Any way you look at it, he was over top of her. He was over top of her situation. Amen. Here it is that, that she was afflicted and symbolically it reminds us of our position, our position as well. Until we utilize Christ as being over us, we will never effectively minister to anybody. Amen. God, be over me. Everything. You're the Lordship in my life. Amen. Jesus is the head. Amen. The church is the body. Amen. Jesus is the head. Our life is just lived out as the head gives us programming of what we are to do. And Jesus Christ is the head of everything. Amen. And he should be the head of every man and every woman who claims to serve Him. He is at the head and we will never do anything in our life until we realize that the Lord is over us. Amen. And when He becomes over us, we will be of service to Him. God, be over me. Just as you were over Peter's mother-in-law, she got up and ministered. Be over me. So the enabling for service, the first thing is the position of Christ. Where is He at in your life? You want to do something great for, for the kingdom of God? You want to do something great in your life? Amen. But when the pressure is to perform, amen, the greatest responsibility is to perform for the kingdom of God. And Christ has got to be over us if we're going to do that. You know what? I want to perform for God. I want my family to and so as Christ is over me, and as I'm the head of our household, amen, and, and I walk beside my wife, amen, and I lead our family spiritually, we will be able to minister. That's not for the pastor. I'm not even looking at my responsibility as a pastor. I'm looking at my responsibility in life, as each of you should be doing, ministering, because Christ is over me. The second thing is this, is not only the position of Christ, but the power of Christ. 
Now we know that the sickness that kept her from ministering, it was actually an evil spirit. If you read on down through, the Bible says he rebuked the fever and it left her. And so it gives us this ideology, amen, that it was a, a it was a spirit that left her, a spirit of sickness, amen. I believe that the enemy brings sickness as well, just so you know. Sometimes you may be feeling down and out and you may be feeling bad, amen. Some things is because of our environment. Some things are because of sin, amen. Some things are because the enemy has brought it. Amen. So God, Christ has the authority. But in our life, I need to tell you, we need to know the position of Christ, but we need to know the power of Christ. Amen. He rebuked the fever and it left her. The power of Christ has got to enter our life before we'll ever can serve Christ. Amen. Power. Amen. It's not our own strength. Amen. It's not our own ability to get the job done. Here it is. Peter's mother-in-law could not have served even if she wanted to. She had to have the power of Christ come in here before she could serve. She had no ability to even get up out of that bed. That fever had wiped her out. She was down for the count. She, that, you, you felt it before. You've been sick in bed. You might have wanted to get up, and it was all you could do to get up and go to the bathroom. And so here it is. If we're going to do anything for Christ, it is only as the power of Christ comes upon us and in us that we'll be able to do anything for Him. Amen. I'm so grateful tonight. Amen. For the power of Christ in our life. Amen. God is so faithful. Sometimes in our life, we try to do things on our own and our own ability. Several years ago, before, before the girls were born, I, I, I worked with a wonderful volunteer at the hospital, and, and, and I've been blessed to meet so many wonderful volunteers. And this lovely lady, I will never forget her as long as I live. She was just the most lovely and is the most lovely lady, although our paths don't cross anymore except for emails. She was so lovely. So she had been working on the mission field, and, and uh, she came back to live close to her, her daughter. And oh, how she still loved to do stuff for God. She was a volunteer. Her husband had died. She was a volunteer at the hospital. She was a volunteer at the prison, and she was very involved in her church. And in fact, she went, she was so involved that she met a great man that she really developed feelings for. This man appeared to have developed feelings for her. Until someone else came along and left her high and dry. She was blessed. She was, this is what she did. She I remember as she was going through that valley where she just, it wasn't what she wanted. She wanted something different. And she kept being consistent. You see, sometimes there's things that we want, but what we want doesn't always line up. And we try to do it in our own ability, and it fails. Now can I tell you that this lovely lady, the one of the last times I saw her was when my girls was born, and she came to me to visit with us. This lovely lady is one of the critical care counselors who works for Franklin Graham's ministry and all year long. She is deployed all around the United States of America working where lives have been devastated either by shootings, whether it's by fire, whether it's by flood, no matter what it is, she's all over. And her testimony is so astronomical of what God is doing. You know what? Because God got in it. Amen. God got it. What God wasn't in was what she wanted and what was heartbreaking to her. But she realized in the pieces that was left in her feet, amen, that God was doing something that was bigger and greater than her. And she grabbed hold of the vision and she took off running. And when she sends me an email, it grabs my, it grabs my heart because she's never begging for money, although she goes by support of people. Amen. But she's out there and she's ministering and she's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so such a powerful way. Can I tell you, we can do nothing on our own. Amen. Our own efforts are useless. Our own abilities will leave us floundering and not being able to do anything. Amen. But when the power of Christ begins to rest upon us, amen, He begins to do great things in us. I love this verse. Uh, in in, in, in uh, First Chronicles, we find it. Sometimes we don't always pull these verses of power out of the Old Testament. But in 1 Chronicles chapter number 29, verse number 11 and 12, the Bible says, Thine, O Lord, is thy greatness. 
and thy power and thy glory and the victory and the majesty, the majesty, majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. I love that. Both riches and honor come to you, and you reign over all, and your hand is power and might, and your hand is, it is to make great and to give strength to all. Hallelujah. Do you realize that it's not until the hand of God reaches down and touches us and empowers us that we'll be able to do any type of ministry? Amen. We are handicapped until the power of Christ comes upon us, rests upon us, touches us, gives us the ability and enables us to be able to minister. Hallelujah. And the power of Christ is for you. Every one of us here tonight. I'm going to move on quickly. Not only the position of Christ, the power of Christ, but the purpose of Christ. The Bible says that she arose and she ministered unto them. Amen. Christ killed Peter's mother-in-law. Amen. And, and, and he gives us gifts. Amen. That we are, we are able to use to better serve him. Do you know what she did? She got up and she cooked a meal because Jesus would be going on later that day and ministering to others. So God touched her by, uh, by his position over her, by his power in her to provide a purpose for for her because he needed someone to minister to him as well as the others. And so she got up and she began to minister. Do you, you know what? Each one of us here has gifts tonight. Amen. Our gifts in ourselves, amen, may be good and people may admire them. But when God who gives the gift, amen, begins to receive, amen, that gift being able to be ministered back to him, God is glorified through it. You know, you may say, Brother Samuel, I don't really have great gifts. You know, some are blessed with public speaking. Some are great public speakers. Some are not. It's okay. God is gifted with that. Amen. And so a gift is something that comes, amen, kind of unexpected, uh, without an expectation of someone else. You have the ability through things in your life that God has gifted you with, if you allow His position over you and His power in you, amen, to bring purpose that brings glory to God and gifting others, amen, then the power of Christ has worked in and through you. Amen. Whatever it is. Some may be good with writing. Amen. Some may be good with self-management. Some may be good with networking. Some may be good with math. Some may be good with de uh, decision making. Some may be better in critical thinking. Some may be better uh, 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 in, in their talents of being creative. Amen. I don't know what it may be. Your personalities are all different. But you are gifted. And God has gifted you with that gift on purpose so that you can bring glory to Him and minister to others. I want you to realize that tonight. Every one of you, once again, I'm back to the same place where we're put under pressure by all the social media. Amen. You know, social media can make some families look so beautiful and you don't know the situations that's going on behind those doors. Amen. And some situations can make you think that someone lives in a big, beautiful house and it's always clean. Because who's going to post a picture of a picture of their messy house, right? Some may post a picture of a big, fancy uh, 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 vehicle. Some may post a picture of themselves, and you may think, well, my, oh, my, we're the same age, and they have more hair, and they have more color in their hair, and they are skinnier, and they have less wrinkles. It's amazing what Photoshop can do. <laughs> the pressure put on. You know what? It's time the pressure of all that stuff is forgotten about. And the gift that is given from God deep within is realized. And we use that gift to minister to others. Amen? <clears throat> says, and immediately she arose. 
there was some enthusiasm. I'm going to do it now. Why do you think that everything just has to be right? Or the demographics and the geography of it has to be just right to be able to minister? Minister starts right at home. How we are with each other. It starts not behind the whole bed. It not, starts not behind a microphone. But it starts immediately. Right where we are. Everyone knows we have an opportunity to miss. So when Christ is over us, his position over us, his power in us, and his purpose given to us immediately with enthusiasm. We have to minister. And then the final thing that I want to look at is the, the extent of her service. She ministered uh, <laughs> to them at home. What's the extent? We have these great big extents. That may not be God's plan. The extension may just be for us, right where I'm at, to minister. So that's true. I, I don't think I've ever been around in three points. So that's probably not my mission. I'm not saying that God can't call me today. That's where you are. Sister Dr. Brother John, you're going to fill the wall to, to a place that I rarely ever go. That's what you want. A lot of you probably don't enter into where I live or where I work. Those are my places that are beyond this whole thing that I can finish. But unless Christ is over us and his power is on us, realize that our purpose and the gifts that we are here. Until then, we will not be able to enthusiastically and immediately understand that Christ wants us to But let's do it the way Christ has done. Anybody can add, I see that I've done longer.